Experience. I'm your host, Jay Rose. We have a really, really, really special episode for you guys today. I've invited some of my closest friends and peers in the creative community and as well in my personal life to come with me and have some brunch, chop it up with me, and just kind of vibe out and have fun. It's a way for me to say thank you to everyone that's been a part of my journey, everyone that has supported my vision and everyone that really believes in me and really wants to see me win. And I want to say thank you to all of you. I'm going <clears> to... <throat> Am I crying already? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say thank you to all of you. And this is my way of saying thank you. Inviting you guys here to the studio to break bread with me. And let's just talk about creativity and whatever else comes out because I already know you guys are going to have some amazing things to say. <laughs> These are some people that I truly, truly love and I really cannot wait for you guys to meet them. Um, so one of my first guests for today is Shay Marie G. She's a curator, host, and entrepreneur. I also have here Hans Noir, who's a spoken word artist, photographer, and videographer. Yes. I have Elise woman of the night, <laughs> spoken word artist, and an amazing mother. I have Queen Candace, talk show host, and money management specialist. Mm -hmm. I have Mika J. Woods, spoken word artist, comedian, and talk show host. Mariah Scott, life cultivator and storyteller. Victor B., freestyle poet and vocalist. And my right hand to the brand, Treasure Lay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> welcome, 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 you guys. Thank you so much for coming out today. And um, we had some good food. We nice and full. Now we like sipping on some OJ. <laughs> so listen, I made the orange juice. So I don't know what they're going to say now. Um, but, you know, I want to start off today's discussion first. Um, because you guys all really played a part, whether directly or indirectly, in this pursuit of me launching this amazing project, The Jero's Experience, um, I wanted to kind of go around the table and just ask you guys, <clears throat> what made you believe in this vision that I had when I first uh, presented it to you? So, I would like to know. <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. So... <laughs> I remember our first actual like bonding experience where we were sitting at the bar um, in Astoria. The right. Oh, that's what it was called. No, no, but okay. it was a bar. <laughs> yeah, it was a bar. Okay, so yeah, we were sitting down, we were talking, we were going over all our stress and things in life and stuff. You were telling me, you know, you want to get your company started, get your business together. I'm like, well, go for it. Like, you got a dream, why not? Right? We talking about all that good stuff. You listen to all my drama in my life, <laughs> and it definitely like it made me see you different as a person. It's like I finally got an inside view, not just the person who hosts and plays nice and so on and so forth. No, she's genuinely nice. She genuinely cares. So, you know, it was good for me to see you in that light. And that definitely never changed. It's always like, whatever Rose need me, I'm there. Aww, I'll do it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to cry already. I'll go next. Um, so I was actually introduced to you through someone else who kind of like started following me through my account. I had like an assistant before that. And... I clicked on your actual live one day and your car chronicles had me <laughs> I was like, I have to watch this girl like all the time now. So I started actually like low-key stalking you. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. Low-key stalking you. And then I was like, oh, she's really cool. And then like, you know, I invited you out to the um, meeting that I had for the woman organization I was a part of before. And like, you just really brighten up a room when you come into it. And your personality is amazing. And so I was just like, well, now you're doing a talk show that fits. It completely <laughs> fits in like who you actually are at the, at the foundation. Aww, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm in my, like, I'm in my happy place when I'm, doing this so thank you 
I'll go next. I believe in you, J. Rose, because you're like this superwoman. You're a mom, you're a businesswoman, and you're an entrepreneur. From the first time I met you at like a at a show that we were doing in Queens. And oh, yes. From there, you're like, oh, you know, come to my open mic. And I'm like, yo, she's just dope. <laughs> and that was when I first started on stage. And so I've been Look, appreciative. I would have never known you just started. Yeah. And since then, you've been such like a, a pillar of light for me because so many people in this world are different and you're always there and you're always positive. And I believe in everything that you do is and it's gonna be great. And it has been. <laughs> I'll go next. Um, Jay, love you to death. Um, I think the first time I interacted with Jay Rose was, I remember the first time I remember Jay Rose was at a open mic and she did this bad bitch poem, which I absolutely love. Like that, I ain't no bad bitch. Like bad bitches get slapped with newspapers. <laughs> She came up to me because we, we, you know, J Rose is like my spirit animal in another life. Spirit animal, y'all. Yeah. Uh, she came over to me and she was just like, yo, that piece you did, because I'm a little raunchy sometimes. Um, but <laughs> she was like, that piece you did. And then she said, like, that she was going to start something big. And I was just like, okay, well, I'm taking your Instagram and I want to, like, ride out with you through there. And she was like, you know, I've been following you for two years. I was like, I was like oh, this is support, support. And from there, it's just been uphill. And I love you. I've definitely enjoyed mm -hmm. watching your journey. And I think everybody at this table, I've been a part of your journey as well. So it's it's great to like have people there to share your journey with, but then they're also willing and vulnerable enough to share their journey with you too. So like, I'm so grateful for that. Aww. 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 Come on, man. You need sound effects. <laughs> Well, I'll go next. Um, I don't know. I think the first time um, we met was through your expo, your women's expo. And from then, we became familiar with each other because I was hosting Rock's Poetry and you were hosting your open mics. And we kind of connected through there. And from then, it's been literally a snowball effect. Like, I look for you for guidance. We bounce ideas off of each other. Like, if I come out with a business idea and I'm like, you're the person who I text first. <laughs> like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this idea? And you and you do the same with me. You're like, wait, how do you feel about this? And when you came to me and said, Yo, I'm starting my television show, I was like, duh, you did this <laughs> yesterday. And I'm like, if anybody, if anybody could create a show and create a vibe, you are that person. And you are, you're literally like a connecting type of force. So people gravitate to you with who have, you know, creative genius. And I feel like you just, you just, I don't know. I couldn't imagine my life without you creating. Oh, like, you are definitely my sister. Definitely. I have makeup on. <laughs> I can go. I can go next. Not I'm from the Bronx, though. Not I'm from the Bronx. I can go next. Um, so, really, when I'm thinking about the question that you posed, right, what makes me believe in your vision? Um, it really is the woman behind it. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about leadership, when we're talking about really building something that affects and impacts people in such a positive way, that's something that I gravitate towards, and that's something that I get behind. And right, and so when we were sitting down, I remember like the first time, I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how the conversation was going to, to move. But when we sat down and you literally explained to me what the J. Rose experience was going to be, I literally was like, oh, she got it. Like, <laughs> like she has it. And I'm always inspired by people who always think outside of themselves. And that is who you are. That's the essence of who you are. And so I gravitate toward those people. And I'm always like, how can I support you? Yeah. Because it's not even about you. <laughs> but it's about the lives that you're impacting, right? Like you're literally a light and you're responsible for the growth around you. And that's so amazing and that's so powerful. And so I'm so excited and elated to know you. And of course, because of you and who you are and who you decided to be designed as, that's why I follow you in your vision. Wow. 
lot to love. My lashes are about to start flying. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, thank God I didn't put on lashes. <laughs> How to follow such prominent words. Um, <laughs> Come on, freestyle, Come on. Well, it's, it's Come on, spoken King. that um, you reap what you sow. Mm. And so I noticed that you plant so often to other people, and it's not just a lip service. Mm. So when you give to other people willingly and of a good heart, you eventually reap a harvest of the very same thing. And so that's exactly how I feel about you in regards to I believe in what you do because you're consistent and because I've seen you show up and show out for other people with no spotlight on yourself. And that speaks volumes, even though you know some people may not notice it, it speaks volumes, especially to me. So that's why I follow you. Oh, yes. Mm. He's my favorite person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I feel like the question is, why do you believe in Jay Rose's vision? It's like, did you hear everything that everyone just said? Like, <laughs> why, why not? And it's like, you guys get to see her when she's hosting or when she's putting things together, but I get to see what happens behind the scene. And no one knows how many hours J. Rose spends behind her screen, like putting things together, the templates that she has, all the work, like, when I see her just in action, I'm like, oh my god, I've seen this woman in five different outfits today. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. And I follow her because when I first met her, she reached out to me and saw like my potential. And anybody else could have kept all of the information that she knew to herself, and she decided to share it with me because she saw that I was being consistent with my vision. And I feel like... Whenever you're, you want to do something, it's always good to have a mentor. I'm always down to have a mentor. I am willing to be molded, like, you don't even know. So when J. Rose gave me the opportunity to be mentored, I was like, I'm in. Like, <laughs> what? Like, you need me to do what? I'm in. Like, I'm all the way there. And I do see myself being, you know, like a mini J. Rose in the Aww. future. I, I call her J. Mega Rose. Like, <laughs> like, have you ever seen, like, these mega churches? Like, <laughs> Today we were talking about how many people she has interviewed. There's how many people here today? There's 13 people. Do you hear everything that everyone had to say? This is only such a small portion of the effect that Jay Rose has had on people. Like, is that not mega? That's huge. <laughs> I told uh, you guys before, like, all this content and stuff that everyone's putting out there is legendary, yo. Like, I'm gonna sit there and on my couch in my mansion, bin watching. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're a combination of so many things to me. You're my sister, but yeah, you're like my mom, and you're my mentor, and you're my boss. Like, you're just everything. And I love how you are so different. You know, you, you love variety. You, you're not scared to be who you are. And I feel like that's huge because a lot of us are not like that. A lot of us are, are afraid to be who we are. Before you, I feel like I didn't even want to do lives and stuff virtual voices like being able to be around other creative people i was able to find my voice yeah. my virtual voice <laughs> so and you just do a lot like i just can't wait to see what the future holds man like we're only in the beginning so that's yes. facts this no reason is crazy. just the beginning you're right this is just like the stepping stone of where this is going um i'm gonna just throw out a question i had a whole bunch of questions to talk to you guys about but <laughs> Um, I want to save some time for a really fun game because you already know I love to play. Um, but I really wanted to know um, for you guys as creatives, because everybody here is a creative in their own way. Um, what is one of your biggest fears as a creative? Mm. The imposter syndrome. <laughs> Seriously, uh, yeah. because I and 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 most. Most definitely, like, in the past, like, couple of months, it's creeped its way into, like, who I am. I'm just like, I know that I have great things to say, and it's going to be great, and I know that it's meaningful, it's impactful, but something in me says, do you really have the right to say Ooh. those kinds of things? Are you really authentic? Mm. Right? Um, yeah, don't make me cry. Don't make me cry. <laughs> So, so like, yeah, it, it's definitely like not feeling like I'm doing enough, but then feeling like I'm doing too much at the yeah, same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I fully so. understand that. I fully understand that. Um, 
I'll go next. For me, my biggest fear as a creative is uh, is to never be heard and then to always be misunderstood. Mm. Because I, I have a fear, like I'm putting all this work out there and I'm I'm trying and my biggest my biggest goal will be to have my name somewhere written in stone outside of my gravestone. Mm. So I, my fear is to never be heard and then when I am if I am heard to be misunderstood. Mm. I can go next. Um, I think my biggest fear as of right now is not living out my purpose. Mm -hmm. I know that I am here for a reason and I want to make sure that I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that the lives that I'm able to impact and touch, um, I'm able to like do that to the full extent. Mm -hmm. I never yeah. want to get to a point where you know, and I'm taking this from like a spiritual lens. I never want to get to a point where someone's like, "Yo, you didn't, you didn't do what I called you to do," <laughs> <laughs> and that's a problem. That. Yeah, and yeah. so I like a lot of that is making sure that I remain in an uncomfortable position and discomfort, um, and knowing how to operate within that discomfort, but also understanding that my decisions, my life is not my own. And so I have to make sure that I continue to speak and I continue to deliver. And I deliver at 110% excellence every single time. Yes. Oh, yeah. I hear that. That's right. I totally agree. And just to bounce off of that, um, in retrospect, I, I fear being able to just not give enough to myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like I spend a lot of time creating, you know, places for people to come and bring themselves and to be themselves. But am I really being myself? Am I giving myself and spreading myself too thin? Don't look at me. <laughs> you already know. Always, always <laughs> lectures me about that. She's like, Chanel, what, what do you do for yourself? And I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> true story. I'm like, what does Shay want right now? Shay wants to make treats for her coworkers. <laughs> happy <laughs> just go ahead and just do it I'm just like I like giving to people that makes me happy but it's it's also a fear of mine and I've realized like self-care is so important mm -hmm. you know and, and I've now I've realized like okay these couple of hours I'm going to dedicate to giving to myself whether it be a bubble bath whether it be a facial or just writing some positive things about myself and talking to myself and having that self-talk and I feel like it, it definitely helps me in order to give to other people because I have enough to give because I've built up myself enough to give. You know? Yeah. yeah. I would say impact. Making sure, not only just like affecting other people, but you want to make sure, like for me, um, when I started doing poetry, it was to, for myself to be heard, you know, but then after a while, you kind of realize how many people you impact to come forward, you impact to, to be brave, to have courage or whatever. They've seen your journey and they're like, yo, I have people to this day that call me and they're like, yo, you've grown so much. You're not that same person, you know, and I want to keep making that impact because it's like, it's not just me that can change and grow. You can grow as well. So I want to make sure that's, that's, that's something that I continuously do throughout the rest of my time here on earth just make sure you keep that impact going everywhere and pay for it i think one of my fears is as a creative is being too consumed in like what's going on in my head um mm -hmm. because oftentimes we get caught up in our creative lives but then there's still that other side of life that we have to tend to and sometimes i feel like i get into just being branded instead of being hans and being branded sometimes comes with a lot <laughs> so um as a creative i feel like it could negatively impact me as far as you know my writing how much I'm producing you know there's a lot of times where I want to be reclusive but I don't want to like be out in public a lot of people don't know that but because people know who I am they'll be like oh my god Hans is a social person but I'm like like <laughs> because it's, it's it's you know that's how bad I'll be in my head so mm -hmm. that's my biggest fear I'm gonna ask another question, like, and I want really short answers, like ten second answers. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> fill up, fill up, refill. Um, I've been trying to hide this in my glass. Yeah, I see. That's what I've been trying. I was trying. It's still there. Nah, I was failing. I was trying. I got I'm the horrible person for this job. Okay. All right. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Oh, I just want this. I want this. I want this on camera to show alcoholics. <laughs> I will make like the biggest one in my glass of water. Hey, 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 hey. I'm dead. 
Not that was so <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> As short of an answer as you can answer, okay? So I want to know from you guys, what is missing from the creative community? That is not going to be a short Girl, answer. perform um i know that you don't perform but when i see you speaking at events and even um your own show like i want to know what excites you about being front and center on that stage i want to feel like like i said i, I want to be heard and I, when i say heard i don't mean i just want people to listen mm -hmm. i want you to hear me meaning i want you to to, I want to see my words go into your head and thought. And I want you to think about a moment where maybe if I said something like niggas ain't shit, I want you to be like, I want you to think about that dude that wasn't shit and be like this. And I want to see it on your face in the audience. You be like, of it overall like you just go up there and you know you like first of when like what want some cocky shit when you get up there and you know you doing good and you're killing you see everybody face first off nobody makes a sound they're just like yeah. oh you ain't come to play like yeah. no i didn't i didn't so i missed that that probably like that the first time the first time i saw elise perform <laughs> she pulled a wig off her head oh, and i was like <laughs> she's fired <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to be dramatic. completely and totally honest. I don't get excited about being on the stage. Mm -hmm. I, I actually I have like know. years of like public speaking, being afraid of that and actually like diagnosed anxiety. Mm -hmm. But what I do enjoy is the impact that I make, mm -hmm. right? The people who reach out to me afterwards, like that moved me. Mm -hmm. So that's what keeps me going and that what's, that's what makes me go beyond my anxiety and my fear of being on stage is I have to reach out to that person because right. without me, then what? Like, yeah. how would I be able to move that person without it? Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to hear from you two real quick also. And then Mariah, <laughs> Mariah, Mariah, Mariah. <laughs> what excites you about being on stage? Let them speak. Let them speak. <laughs> yes, Kate. I was going to say that I, it feels like I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. Like I'm big on my life path, so I'm a life path three, and it's like the life path threes are known as creative people, so you can throw them on the stage, and no matter what they do, they'll thrive, and I feel like I thrive, you know? Like I know that I'm killing it, <laughs> <laughs> but it just feels so natural, and like that chills. Just when you yeah. asked the question, it was just like, it brought me there, and I was like, oh, when am I going to do that again? <laughs> so that's my fave. Uh, for me, it's like everything happening at once. So it's, um, I'm a nervous wreck when I get on stage every time, every single time. And it, um, it humbles me because when I'm up there, it's like I'm throwing everything. So it's singing, it's, it's poetry, it's all of it because there's nothing to hide at that point. I'm completely vulnerable, completely exposed. So it's this fissure of being nervous, but also knowing that you could do it mm -hmm. and it feels purposed. So I can't run from it. I have to kind of just embrace that fissure, that like in between. And so that's usually where I stay at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was perfect. My favorite. <laughs> perfect answer. How about you? Um, I'm actually in a similar boat. I don't have a fear of the stage, um, but I'm such a private person that when I am sharing so many private pieces, 
it makes me like, OMG, like, why are we here? And why are we speaking about this right now? Um, and so for me, it's everything that happens off stage. Mm -hmm. um, like, you were saying, when I have those conversations, uh, people literally will tell me personal, very personal, mm -hmm. hit me up in my DMs, mm -hmm. like personal situations that they've gone through. Mm -hmm. And literally, I will be sitting here like, no, you're, you're doing what you need to do. And you have to continue because people are being liberated. People are actually starting their healing process mm -hmm. because you were not afraid to speak up. And even though it makes me so uncomfortable, I like y'all see you thinking it's a breeze. And people are like, you been doing this, you been doing competitions in this room. I'm like, listen, now I'm competitive, so that's a different story. <laughs> but like, oh, I so it. competitive? I did, I, oh, yes, I'm competitive, so I'm excited about this game. But <laughs> <laughs> I was loving your shirt and pocket. You're right here for it. So, what a perfect segue, okay, that Mariah brings up being competitive because I've got a game. Of course oh, you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I took to the streets of Instagram. Okay. And I went to, I made a left at the Instagram stories, Ooh. right? <laughs> and I asked some questions. They were only for poets, and I made sure that none of y'all saw it because I didn't send it to y'all. Okay. <laughs> I was like, no questions on your story. I was like, I was like, I'm looking for questions. So we're just taking it out of your close friends. <laughs> I removed you from close friends and added you back when I was like, wow, I feel some kind of way. Wow. So I asked a hundred poets Ooh. some questions. So we are gonna play. Poetic Family Feud. <laughs> From the brand that redefines the chivalrous style of today's gents comes their exclusive Key to the City collection. I'm super hyped about this collection because no matter where we go with the J-Rose experience, no matter what city we're in, I'm going to be able to rep for New York and people are going to know where I'm from. Hit up Gent and Scholar to rep for your city, including keys to Atlanta, Chicago, D.C., Houston, Los Angeles, Miami, New Orleans, Philly, St. Louis, and of course, New York. So head over to gentandscholarcode.com and use the discount code JROSE10 for 10% off your purchase of $50 or more. Keep growing. Whether it's tax season, the holidays, or whatever falls in between, you want to make sure that you're being smart with your money. So go visit my girl, Queen Candace, at the Queen Blueprint to learn how to gain your financial freedom. You could get a personalized debt payoff plan, a full financial overview, and learn to repair your relationship with money. Smarter Money Moves are waiting for you at www.thequeenblueprint.com or call 877-387-BLUE. Use code JROSE20 for 20% off of all our financial services. I'm so excited I got both my kids' appointments to get their hair done at Shining Star Kids Salon in Brooklyn, New York. The best part is, I get to pick up a couple of my favorite natural hair products like their Fearless Edge Control, ooh, or their Fearless Hair Oil. And these are just some of my favorite products to style my hair with. Head over to ShiningStarKidsSalon.com to order from their line of natural products the whole family can enjoy. Or make an appointment if you're in town. Use code JROSE20 at checkout for 20% off your online purchase. Keep growing. Ladies, want to know what I love as much as chocolate? Fashion. So of course, I'd end up dressing in some Fashion Is My Chocolate styles. Head over to fashionismychocolate.com for collections with unique details, comfortability, and versatility. Use our promo code to be the sweet tooth of fashion no matter what mood you're in. Make sure you enter J-Rose at checkout for 10% off your purchase. Keep growing. We've got Poetic Family Feud. We've got team, what's your team name again? How y'all like y'all coffee? No, no cream. cream. <laughs> team coffee, no cream. And we got <laughs> team, team excellence. Team excellence. 
<laughs> all right, so. <laughs> all right, with the pinky up, with the pinky. Team excellence. All right, are y'all ready for the first question? Let's yes. do it. All right, we asked a hundred poets. Name something that a poet usually wears. Elise got that. It's a beret thing. Thing oh. that be on their head. The little, you yeah, the little hat. <laughs> <laughs> the little hat. The little hat thing. Hat, the is the 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 hat, hat is on the board. Is that not the Hat is on the board. It is the number two answer. Oh. <laughs> it is okay. the number two answer. Come on. Candace, what you got? You ain't got it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh no, it's a fedora. A fedora a hat. hat. She said a hat. She oh, said a hat. Oh, uh, sunglasses. <laughs> Don't tell her. Oh, she's what? She's oh, got a bad. Bad. Glasses. Yes, that is the number four answer. Oh. So team <laughs> excellent. Mariah, yeah, no, so Mariah, do you have an answer? Uh, yes. You got this. I feel like that. You got it. Okay. Because mm -hmm. it was getting help from there. A scarf? Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> not the, not the, okay. We're going to believe. Drunk. 
No. And. Okay. That's okay. two. So y'all want to go? Fold on stage. Yes. That's a good one. Yes. Oh.
Treasure, you ready? Treasure, yes, you ready? Treasure. I don't know. Treasure, yes, ready. treasure. <laughs> Name a reason poets write. Shay. Self love. Because I do that. <laughs> no, wait, she's looking for it. Hold on, she's like, wait, I'm, I'll play it with my mind. Anger, anger. Wait, you can't. You wait. <laughs> question so I came up with something different um I want to know if you guys can describe the J-Rose experience in one word lit <laughs> <laughs> inspirational ah more fire <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can put all this in one I'm gonna keep watching okay <laughs> Shout out to Mark Studio for giving us the space to do this. Shout out to our sponsor that provided the amazing brunch that we had earlier, Tanika's Eats, Inc. 
Thank you so much, girls. It was slamming. We had some people in here. I'm not going to name any names, <coughs> Mika. They never had chicken waffles before. If you just going to call me out like that, look. <laughs> now I got to have a moment. I'm going to look right here at this camera. So, Tamika, I ain't never had chicken and waffles. But, baby, I'm not mad at it now. It was delicious. I'm here for it, baby. Thank you. For With the, the spirit, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, baby. Tamika, your chicken and waffles is finger licking. <laughs> Love that chicken from Tanika. <laughs> Radio, Bronx Poetry, Sip and Paint NYC, and you can find me on YouTube and Ustream and all those other streaming networks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now it's my turn. Uh, I am Mika J. Woods. You can find me on YouTube at The Hungry Poets TV. You can find me on In The Mix. You can find me on Instagram, everywhere. You can Google us, baby. I am Mika J. Woods. That is M-E-K-A J. Woods. Like Tiger? Yeah! yeah. 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 Why are you so amazing? Why? Because I know you. Okay. Come on, Listen, Kevin. it's Hans. And you can watch it. Oh, hey! At Hans Duarte. You better show me how to do it. You can find me at Hans Duarte on uh, Instagram and, and Twitter and, and on Facebook. It's Hans Duarte Speaks. Yes! yes. Hey y'all, I'm Blue Queen Bell. Candace, your favorite money management specialist, and you can find me on Instagram at the Queen Blueprint at Queen Blueprint TV. My YouTube is Queen Blueprint TV. You can catch me on Google too. And Roku TV, Apple TV, Fire Stick TV, and our Heart Radio. Yeah, mm -hmm. hey, okay. Yeah. Get your There's mobile a lot of TV. She's a professional. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot, it's me. Okay. <laughs> L-Y-S-E-A-A-A. -A -A. You can find me on Clubhouse. I don't read the room. I am the room. Same Ooh. thing. Give it soon. I am passion. I am a mother. You can find me on all those things I just listed. Keep the same name. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. My name is Mariah Scott, and you can find me on Instagram at Mariah, M-A-R-I-A-H, the letter N as in Nancy, S-C-O-T-T. -T. I also have a poetry album out on all streaming platforms, so you can Google Spotify, Amazon, pretty much anything Mariah Scott to find my poetry. And I'm also on YouTube with Mondays with Mariah and Mariah Scott Poetry. Thank and you. And she excellent. Ooh. Come on, you're kind of forever. I'm not. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Victor B. Um, you can find me on IG at uh, Victor double underscore B E. Victor double underscore B E. Be victorious. Treasure Lay on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and you can also follow my Treasure Vibe page where I do amazing braiding. Let me braid your hair and Thanks so much guys for tuning in. You can stay in touch with us and stay connected at J Rose Experience on Instagram. And if you want to watch more episodes, you can definitely catch them on the Rose Garden events on Facebook, YouTube, Queen Blueprint TV, and all the other audio streaming platforms that you can find. And you can follow me as your host on the gram at My Crumble Thoughts. Keep going, guys. Thank you.